All right, welcome. So in this video, I've actually started adding a mini map to the game world. We've, uh, in the last video, looked at adding a camera element so that we could scroll through the game world, so our game world could expand larger just than just by the viewable area, and then move that viewable area along following Mario. Now what I want to do is, well, Mario doesn't normally have a mini map uh, in, in his games, but um, maybe in your game you want to add a mini-map that's going to visualize the entire game world, not just the part that you can see through the camera. So that's going to be the goal of this video. Now, because Mario doesn't actually have a mini-map normally, I've created my mini-map mostly to be a debugging tool, something that I would use in the background when I've got my debug flag turned on. And so instead of creating it as its own normal entity that will exist separately from other entities, I'm going to have mine embedded inside my scene manager. So as you can see up here, the last thing I'm going to do inside my scene managers draw method is ask my minimap to draw itself. I've given it an update method as well, just in case I did want to add it to the game engine and, and have it function properly, but I have no intention of adding anything to the update method for my minimap. And the reason for that is the minimap is for the most part really just all about drawing. And the second point that I'll comment here is that the minimap itself is really consistent, just like the game world, of many different entities. It's not just one entity itself, it's really a, an aggregate of all of the entities in the game world. And for that reason, I'm going to pass off most of the responsibility of drawing the minimap back to those entities themselves. So not the minimap's not going to draw and look up where everything is and draw it. It's going to ask those entities to draw themselves. And so just like we've done this in the normal draw loop inside the game engine where we've gone through every single entity entity and we've asked the entity itself to draw itself. Well, I'm going to do the same thing except I'm going to call a slightly different helper function, this minimap function. That's going to, uh, again, take similar arguments. It's going to take the context I want to draw to. The only other thing it's going to take as an argument is going to be the minimaps x and y. And that just gives me the freedom to move the minimap around uh, if I don't like where it happens to be uh, when I'm displaying it. Otherwise, I've drawn an additional little uh, rectangle around the map, mini map just to sort of give me an ex expression of the actual space. So I've decided to make a black rectangle and I've made it uh, as wide as I've told it. So I'm going to tell my mini map how wide it is. I did this with the anticipation that Mario has different length uh, levels. So if I want to use this mini map again on a later level, I'm going to have to change the expression here. For your maps, you might not have this type of uh, difference and so you might have fixed size in which case you might not need these parameters at all but I've added those parameters in, and I've got the I've decided to have one block width be the size of my whole mini map and since the main map the main game world consists of uh, 16 pixels per block uh, this means I'm going to be shrinking down my game world roughly to 1 16th the size as I've mentioned I've added a draw mini map function to all of my uh, entities now. Again, this is maybe not something you will need unless you actually are building a minimap into your game. And so I've not included as sort of the, the part of the main base code that I would recommend you build up. Not every game is going to need a minimap, but if you are going to use a minimap, you might want to build a little helper function like this. Now I've also made another decision. There's sort of two ways that we can build a minimap. One way since we're already dealing with 2D sprite animation, we could actually re rebuild or recall this whole draw method and ask it to just draw the same thing smaller now in the minimap. And that's actually one way, especially in the, in the more modern game design, where we can just reuse the same code. I might have to refactor this code down below here to be able to draw, be drawn at different scales so that I can draw it at the, uh, the original scale, but then also at the shrunk down mini scale. And that would just shrink down all the sprites to be very small, but we still might be able to see some small amount of detail on those sprites. We might be able to tell that Mario is Mario and so on. However, uh, maybe more commonly, or at least an older fashioned way of doing things, is each entity is then replaced by something smaller, like a circle or a rectangle of a fixed color. And that's what I've decided to do here. So I've decided for Mario, I'm going to draw Mario as a red rectangle. And again, it's not too difficult to see the logic I've got here. I'm taking the uh, minimaps X and Y as the base 
corner that I'm going to draw from. And then I'm going to add on Mario's X and Mario's Y. But I've taken the opportunity to divide out by the bit width here. That's just 16. As I mentioned, we're going to be shrinking it down to be about 1 16th the original size or size on the um, normal game world. And then I've just got my width and my height here. Well, my width for Mario will always be the same. And I've decided that's just going to be uh, one block width here and I'm using the this parameter entry of scale which is set to three right now which is I've actually got this scale parameter in my game to just make every pixel be three pixels because otherwise Mario would look pretty small in my browser so again to do that I'm, I'm technically using one pixel to represent one block in the game world but I'm going to expand all of those by size three. So this is just making sure that my pixels are actually, my rectangles here are actually three by three. And then the last thing I've got here is just a little bit of logic for Mario to say, hey, if you're, if you're grown up, if you're big, then I'm gonna make sure you're of size two. Instead, if you're small, then you're gonna be of size one. So all I've done so far is I've added this extra logic to draw Mario's rectangle into the, the minimap. Let's see how that works here. And we can see that Mario's, uh, the, little, the little red rectangle moves with Mario as Mario moves in the world. And now what I want to do is maybe add some of these other elements to the world so that we can see, say, the ground, the blocks, the Goomba, and so on. All right, so I'm going to start by just seeing if I can add my ground in. And, and for my ground, I've just gone and cut and paste the same uh, logic I had for Mario there. But I'm going to change so that now my ground is going to be brown. And now I'm going to also have to go in and change for my, my X, Y width and height for each of my ground elements. So my ground element also has a built-in width. So I'm just going to divide out by that as well. And actually all the ground elements in my, in the first level at least, are two blocks high. So I'm just going to hard code that in as well. And we can see here that indeed we've got some ground elements now. Let's see if we can do that for our other bricks and other blocks. The first one I will look at is uh, my blocks, which are actually so similar to my ground that I just cut and paste the same code in there and it should work exactly the same. But now let's take a look at my other block worth looking at, which are called bricks. And there's actually multiple different kinds of bricks. So I'm going to want to make sure that what I draw is going to be dependent on the brick. For instance, the first brick here, uh, if it's of type zero, it's going to be invisible. So I don't want to draw those ones at all, um, but I can draw the other ones for bricks, questions, or blocks. My block setting here is for what you get after out of a question box after you've... So to do this, I'm going to add uh, a test based on my type. So this.type determines if we are a brick or a question box or some other kind of block or maybe even an invisible block. So I'm going to consider a couple different colors here. And I think my bricks and maybe my blocks, I'm both going to uh, count as brown, but I might want my question box to have a different color, let's say gold. So I'm just going to go check what's my question box. My brick question is two. So if it is equal to two, I will set it to gold, which I'm just assuming for the moment is a web color. I might get an error on that. And otherwise, I will set it to be brown. The other change we're going to need to make here is that we don't have a width parameter here and that the width of all of our blocks are indeed just the scale. And we don't need this times two here anymore. So let's do a quick reload. And wow, now I've got some gold. Looks like the question box has worked and we've got some bricks and blocks. Looks like there's one little bug there. My invisible block is showing up. So let's make sure we don't do that. So I'm just going to put in a simple if this dot type. If this dot type equals zero, then this will be false. Otherwise, it will be true. So hopefully that will fix it for us. And now my invisible block doesn't appear. Um, what else do I need to include in here? Well, maybe my tubes and my enemies. Tubes are green, and I'm going to use, again, the same code that we had for our, our ground. Uh, our tube does not have a width parameter, but is indeed uh, has a fixed width of 2. So I'll just use this value here, params.scale times 2. But then it has a variable height, and I've been calling that the size of the tube. And the, the actual value I'm going to need here is size plus 1. You can see I'm using that value up above here 
and a couple of my other calculations for my bounding box and that's because the way the tube kind of works it's got the top of the tube and then it's got a number of tube pieces that go be below that top and and that number is variable and so in both my draw i need to know how many so i can draw them but then also for my bounding boxes collision and so on i need to know that well i'm going to include that same logic here inside my minimap drawer and i got a little error there because i forgot the this we can see here that when i when i fix that error that indeed we've got our tube showing up on the minimap now too so it looks like what remains is my goomba and my uh, Koopa. So I'm going to have to make changes to them. So I just did a quick uh, paste of, again, that ground logic in there. And I'm just going to make some changes. So for my, my Goomba, I might pick light brown. And again, guessing that's a web color. But it's easy to make the change here because a Goomba is exactly as wide as it is tall, which is one block. So I'm just going to hard code it in as params.scale. Turns out light brown is not a web color, so let's pick one that I just Googled, which is tan. That looks like that might work for me. And then let's just cut and paste this code. I know I already put a little bit of the ground code in there, but I think this is more appropriate. Let's make this light green. I think that is a web color, except we need to remember one last thing, which is that our, our Koopas uh, at least we we noticed this when we were animating them they're a little bit taller than the goombas um, and if i recall correctly they were one and a half times taller and i just put that on the x so let's put that on the y which brings us to here where indeed we can now see that we've got our goombas showing up as 10 and we've got our koopa showing up here there's only one koopa on this level showing up as light green of course, I haven't added the, the castle or flag yet in, into the main world, so that's not showing up. I've also chosen not to add the, the background elements, the hills, the bushes, and the, the clouds into the minimap. And this is common when you're building your own minimap because you, these elements are not interactable anyways. You probably only want the important elements on the minimap. Now let's just investigate to make sure there's one important feature here. You'll notice the Goomba is not moving yet on the minimap, but once the Goomba enters the actual play field, the camera, I've got some logic set up so that the Goomba will not exist or will not start moving until it exists in the real world. And that's what's keeping my Goombas from uh, over there, not from moving. Now again, we should just double check. Uh, Mario grows on the mini map when he hits his grow. And again, as I approach some Goombas, they will start moving on the mini map as well. All right, I think that's the steps you're going to need to follow if you want to build a mini map of your own. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in that next video.